history and it culminates on stage 19 with an alpine time trial finishing in a Voriaz. That could be decisive. So this tour is far from being over yet. And we're not saying that just to keep you watching. All right, back to the race on the road now with Phil and Paul. Well, Gary, back here with the action. There have been changes. The five riders have been caught at the start of the climb and the Italian Marco Pantani has gone ahead alone. Now, we noted he changed the bike down in Lords and we think to a lighter one. So clearly the attack was part of his plan today. We're about halfway up the climb now. Rominga is in this group, but this group has thinned out somewhat. And Miguel Indurain being left to do all of the work at the front. He takes a little look over his shoulder there to see if uh, the boys are enjoying themselves on his wheel. Well, he's doing a great job. That really is for certain. This is Ugramov just behind. Now we're going yeah, to number 91 is Luke LeBlanc moving up there. Richard Vironk. De La Squavis now starting to suffer a little bit. In fact, one or two riders starting to disappear from this group. There, number 71 is Pavel Tonkov, the man who was the best young rider in the Tour of Italy a couple of years ago. And we get a chance to look a little bit further down here. I think this is Pascalino who was yes. in that group just a little bit before. And there is Jean-Francois Bernard. He's a, a spent force today, but it looks to me as if this is Tony Rominger. And on the left of the road there, the camera's come back because Rominger has been dropped. Tony Rominger has been dropped from that lead group in this small group that's come back. And that is something of a surprise, to say the least. He's with riders who are not regarded as big climbers. Udo Bolt is just behind him. Jean-Francois Bernard is just in front of him. And there is Bernard there. And the other rider climbing away there is Abraham Olano of Spain. And this is a big surprise. The champion of Spain has been dropped. Well, that's not such a surprise, but Tony Rominger has been dropped and rides behind Pascal Lino. Well, this is what can happen when you go up the first mountain of the Tour de France. It's been a very tough tour so far. And a lot of riders put a lot of energy into these first few stages. And to see Tony Rominger get blown away like that, I'm very surprised. That's probably why Miguel Indurain now keeps looking over his shoulder just to make a count of who is in the group with him. Uh, back up to the leader. He will be unaware of what has happened behind him, but his attack has taken him clear. But the race behind has blown apart. Indurain has sat there and kept up a relentless rhythm and watched the field behind him just crack wide open. The greatest names in the Tour de France and indeed in the world of cycling. And now can't hang on to the man in the leader's yellow jersey. Well, in fact, as we go under the five-kilometre banner, it's 26 seconds, so he's actually now starting to peg back Marco Pantani, and it may well be that Big Mig is going to go for the stage victory as well, because I can tell you one thing, there are an awful lot of Basques come to see this stage finish today, and they're camped out all along the race route. The flags are out, as usual, when we come down to the Pyrenees here. Indurain still just sits there and cruises along. Well, there he is, Miguel Indurain. Actually, looks as though he's trying now for a change, at least, as he grimaces a little bit. But my goodness me, he should do. He's torn this race apart and still trying to hang on to his back wheel is the Frenchman, Luc Leblanc, who tried so hard to snatch the race lead when we came through his home area of Limoges. There is Leblanc and there is Veronc and two French riders now keeping the name of France high on the honours list here because that's all that's left. And now it's Delos Cuevas. He's, and I think this is a remarkable performance by Delos Cuevas. He's not a great climber anyway, but he's determined to get a good result out of this year's Tour de France. And he's gritting his teeth and he's hanging on just. Well, he's a big fighter, that's for sure. And he knows Miguel Indurain exceptionally well because he rode on the same team as Indurain for two and a half years. And this is Pantani now, just over three kilometers from the finish and hanging on for what would be a great victory for this Italian and his first ever in the Tour de France. But he better watch out because he could be on the slow track because on the express line is this man in yellow, Miguel Indurain. You know, he's really going for it because now he's getting out of the saddle. He's fighting with his bicycle to get that gear going round. And the red car in front is the car that is behind Marco Pantani. So it won't be very long, I don't think, before Miguel Indurain actually gets up there and gets into contact with him. And what a fight that will be. It'll be interesting to see if Pantani has got anything left to go again because it does get a little bit steeper in the last few kilometres before it levels out nearer the summit. Look oh, at the look face at on that man. It's very rare that you see him try this Absolutely. hard. Absolutely. You can see the sweat running down his cheeks there and he doesn't always put this sort of heart into it because there's still a long way to go in this year's Tour de France and mountains much worse than this still to come. 
in Jirain, riding his 10th Tour de France, has already won 10 stages over those 10 tours. And now he's trying for his 11th and his second this tour. There's the Basque flag under the three kilometer banner now for Pantani so close and yet behind him and coming so quickly is Indurain and I'll tell you it's about 15 seconds yeah. on the line now and just behind that red car Miguel Indurain is racing up to catch Marco Pantani and it's going to be very close Pantani is an excellent climber but Indurain is really fighting now because normally you would see him sitting down setting a nice tempo this pace now that Indurain is setting is the killer instinct he really wants to get this stage well, in the mist, and that might be uh, to some advantage of Pantani. Out of sight can be out of mind. Indurain knows he's up there somewhere, but under normal circumstance, he might be able to see him. But because the mist is down to about 150 yards, he won't see him, and that could be the advantage to the Italian. And look at this, Paul. LeBlanc has come through and giving him a hand now. The only man on the mountain today who could do that. Well, this could be the year of Luke LeBlanc. He's had a tough time over the last couple of seasons with injury, bad knees. He rode a great tour of Spain this year, taking the King of the Mountains competition, as well as finishing sixth overall. And he's the only man who's been able to stay with Miguel Indurain, and now he's actually working with him. So that's great for Luke LeBlanc. Could be the revelation that the French have been looking for, the renaissance of French cycling. Well, strain your eyes in the mist, and you'll see a little man in white in the mist there. That's Pantani. And LeBlanc has given Indurain a little bit of help here now and Pantani may pay the price for that Indurain I think too is now actually suffering quite badly here he needs the help that comes from the Frenchman and the pair of them now are hanging on for the last couple of kilometers of this climb and it could be that Pantani might hang on by the skin of his teeth there he is on the horizon it is so very close but on a climb like this you can be very close to a rider and you just cannot close the last five or ten seconds it is unbelievable it looks to me now as if Pantani is slowing down and Indurain comes by LeBlanc to take up the chase and there's only about five seconds in it now well Pantani's looked over his shoulder and he will have felt that hollow as he shook his head he can't believe it he's seen the yellow jersey is chasing him now he's gonna have to try and sprint again look at the relentless pursuit behind as Pantani is being closed in on by Indurain and you know Paul I think LeBlanc may now be in trouble after making that turn at the front he may well be but this is what Marco Pantani is finding out today that the Tour of Italy is not the Tour de France you can ride away from the main field in the Tour of Italy but there's much more at stake when you come to the Tour de France and Indurain really fighting here it's very rare that you see himself put himself through something like this for a stage victory but he really wants to get back there but he can't quite get the last 20 meters but there it is it looks now as if the junction is about to be made and it may well be that Luke LeBlanc has enough left to surprise Indurain at the top but I tell you what I think this man would definitely like to get the stage victory because he didn't win a big mountain stage last year they were both taken off him oh. by Tony Rominger and he just goes straight by he's gone straight by there are no superlatives left to describe Indurain but Luke LeBlanc has gone he's gone at the minute Indurain came up and that will upset Indurain because he was wanting this stage and he's made that uh, uh, clearly obvious and now Luc Leblanc has attacked at the very moment in Jurain Corps Pantani, a good tactic well that was a fantastic move and I'm surprised to see that Leblanc is still here but obviously at the peak of his form at the moment because he's got the gap on Indurain it's about 15 20 meters at the moment Indurain couldn't respond to that attack he's not able to react to a climber's attack but he's going he's getting out of the saddle he's fighting back this won't be very long before we see the one kilometre banner to go and Luke LeBlanc has got the gap on Miguel Indurain at the moment well he didn't get the stage win down in the Dodon but he's now going to try and get the stage win here on the climb of Otacom above Lourdes but well, you know it's quite easy for a climber to get the gap on somebody like Miguel Indurain but it isn't easy to keep the gap and it looks to me as if LeBlanc had the explosion to get clear but he doesn't have the power to stay clear of Miguel Indurain because Indurain is still eating his way back into the lead that Luke LeBlanc has got there you see oh he's just cruising along gonna get him back and if he can peg him back I don't know that LeBlanc has got much left to take it well the spectator there was giving him all of the encouragement to keep going and uh, this certainly is the big effort now coming from LeBlanc and it's an even bigger one from Indurain who is determined to grab that wheel before he goes into the mist and he's coming at him like a cannonball and once he gets on he's going to sit in that slipstream and say don't try that one again 
and he'll wait until the last possible moment and that acceleration has shook off Pantani. Well, that's most, one of the most dramatic attacks I've seen by Miguel Indre. He's fighting to get back up to Luke LeBlanc. You know he really wants this stage. I can almost feel the want that it, he needs to get this stage. Luke LeBlanc looking over his shoulder now, realizing that Indurain is extremely strong. If these two men come to the line together, I think Big Mig is going to take it. Amazing the way he got rid of Pantani, but Pantani had been at the head of the affairs for quite a while, and now Marco Pantani had tried, and I thought he had a chance of getting that victory there, but he's got blown away as well. Well, I've never seen Indurain in all of his tours ride like this. Uh, this is a man uh, obsessed with winning the Tour de France now, and he's prepared to destroy everybody who even puts up any form of defence. Indurain has gone now and picked up Luc Leblanc again. He's gritting his teeth. He's suffering like I've never seen him suffer before, and he kicks again. And I've got to take my hat off to Luc Leblanc because he answers every move. Well, Leblanc is really flying, and I have rarely seen Luc Leblanc ride like this, apart from a couple of years ago on the stage that went over to Spain. And on that day, was the day that Miguel Indurain wasn't in the yellow jersey. In fact, there was another Frenchman. One kilometer to go, and Indurain is at the front. Well, there's the kite, and Indurain has destroyed the field in the Tour de France today, except for one man, the former champion of France. is tucked in behind him here, Luc Leblanc. And Leblanc is not going to let Indurain out of his sight. You think he can recover and take him on the line? Well, Leblanc is a good climber, and he has got an explosive finish. But the problem is that the, fi the finish here actually levels out a little bit, and it should give Miguel Indurain a chance to beat the little Frenchman. But Leblanc really has given everything today. He's tried to get rid of Indurain, and he's recovering a little bit in his wheel now, and I'm sure that he will push him all the way to the line. But I've rarely seen Miguel Indurain ride like this. The face that he's got at the moment is the mask that I've seen very rarely on a man like this. He really... Look at him. I feel it. It's oh. incredible to see how hard he's trying. Well... It's absolutely wonderful, too, to see such a great athlete at the height of his career uh, do what he's done today. He just kept a tempo that destroyed that break one by one, and only LeBlanc has gritted his teeth and hung on, had the cheek to attack him. Indurain came back and answered that, and LeBlanc is going again. Now can the big Miguel Indurain grit his teeth one more time and take the wheel of LeBlanc? A good acceleration by LeBlanc, but they hasn't got the force there now. Indurain is straight in. Well, I don't think either of them have got the force to go, but LeBlanc taking the initiative of going to the front. It's not very far to go now. It's 400 metres maybe around this corner, and Indurain is going to wait, and it's going to be very close, and he's going to be a very angry man if he doesn't win this stage. Well, this has been a marvellous climb, the first big climb in the Tour de France, a chance to watch a, a, a magnificent man at work, and Miguel Indurain is now launching himself uh, towards the line. They can't really pin down where the line is in the fog up here on the top, but Indurain has made such a wonderful job of this climb. He's destroyed the hearts of all of the riders in the Tour de France. And Luc Leblanc is trying to carry the colours of France as we go into 250 metres to go now. Leblanc is going to go, and I think he'll go at around 150. But Indurain is the only thing he hasn't got is a fast acceleration, so he's starting to wind it up now at 200. Leblanc goes by him, and Leblanc for the second day is going to get a victory for France and nobody could have thought of that but Miguel Indurain has had his moment of glory taken off him as we peer down into the mist from our fixed cameras we'll see the Frenchman now Luc Leblanc sprint clear for a memorable victory here he the only man in the Tour de France who could take on Miguel Indurain and beat him to the line up to the line now comes the rider who started the attack at the bottom Marco Pantani who finished second overall in the Tour of Italy. And that, remember, was one place better than Miguel Indurain. There's no doubt now Miguel Indurain is in yellow to stay in this year's Tour. And now the little shadow on the left who crosses the line. Two minutes, 21 seconds down is Tony Rominger. Well, he's lost almost the same gap. He was behind Indurain overnight. He was down 228. And in just one climb, he's lost two minutes, 21 seconds today. And so, for Luc Lebon, a second try for France in as many days over Miguel Indurain in second place, Marco Pantani third, Richard Baron fourth, and Arma de las Cuevas fifth. Three French riders finishing in the top five. But overall, the yellow jersey stays firmly on the shoulders of Miguel Indurain. In fact, today, he increased his lead over all of his main rivals for victory in Paris on July the 24th. It's a day of rest for the riders tomorrow, 
a chance for many of them to contemplate their future. I'm Phil Liggett saying goodbye.